the craft is actually not to be a salesperson, is to establish a relationship and also not to prematurely pitch. That's a big mistake that a lot of people make. Okay, awesome. So I can't be more excited uh, than I am today to have a great conversation. With my good friend, Mr. Taylor Hack, and uh, with Hack and Co., uh, he's a top producer and team leader. Been licensed now, actually only since 2013. So you're still, you know, you're still a fresh little chicken, there, you know? Do I look like a fresh chicken? Like when you buy a car, you can say what year is this, but everybody has to check the odometer and I'm high mileage, right? Like the, uh, I'm going to need that major maintenance soon because we're rolling up on 10 years and almost a thousand transactions. That's so awesome, man. Um, but I mean, you've been a source of inspiration for me for many years. We've had lots of conversations and um, uh, I get today to get a chance to pick your brain a little bit more about uh, you know, we've had conversations about being lifelong learners and, you know, practicing and not practicing necessarily on your clients all the time so that the, you know, the, the practice is harder than the game, right? And, and those types of conversations. So today we're going to be talking about lose or learn, how training makes wins happen. And so uh, I'll let you kind of take it away here and we'll have a bit of conversation about that. Yeah, like, honestly, I remember uh, those experiences where I felt unprepared, like you're in the moment and you're like, oh, I'm, I should know this, right? I should have this. I wish I would have done this. Like, there's a million things in your mind that you would do to like escape that moment, right? right. <laughs> yeah, it's an uncomfortable feeling. Yeah. So, so taking a look at how many uh, agents that we've helped in our team to, um, develop themselves from that point and avoid that situation. This is where the learning comes from, because here we have some uh, people that do over 50 transactions a year, and we're talking about realtors under three years. And so when we're saying like, how does that happen? That's actually where I like to go in my mind. I like to use this, this method called walking around. So instead of saying, man, I hope this happens, well, let's go and stand where success is. So uh, maybe for a listing appointment, uh, success is when, they, when they've signed that listing. Or if you're talking about the actual overall success is where you've sold that property. But let's just go to the point where we're um, uh, maybe getting to one of those milestone moments where you might feel like a deer in headlights, right? right? Like uh, during the listing presentation. So um, if you take a look at what winning looks like, it's where the people feel very comfortable with you. It's where they feel as though you're credible. And when they're looking at the real estate market, like it was a jungle, they're like, you know what? I think that this guy brings people into the jungle and out of the jungle, you know, <laughs> that's right. Like, this is going to be a good guide for us. That's who you're auditioning to be is their guide. So what does it take? Well, they had to feel like you knew their house, knew their story, and also that you could execute on whatever promises that you're making. Uh, as far as uh, what we do is we essentially interview for this job. I thought right. being a self-employed was not that, but it's endless interviews. <laughs> Anyone can be my boss, yeah. you know? That's a great mindset to come from, right? Like earn that business, right? Uh, like applying for that position. I think that's great. Yeah. Yeah. So when somebody asks you some of the questions in real estate, are you in the mindset to execute in that moment, right? Have you even considered that that might be on the menu of options? Because I don't, I don't think that in a listing interview, anything could happen. I think that that clutters my mind mm -hmm. to think like, oh yeah. And then we we're in the middle of the interview and somebody drove a car through the wall. Nope. I don't have to worry about that. Like that's no. just not normally part of my listing presentation. Right. But will someone say, Hey, how's the market? Yeah. Yes. You know? Is it a buyer's market or a seller's market? These are like entry level questions, but you know what would lay most realtors flat? Why should you be my agent? Right. That is a question that uh, I've used in conferences, walking through and talking to many people. And, uh, and really in the moment, most agents, even with experience are like, because I'm me. Yeah. Yeah. 
So when those things arise, what have you done to prepare for that situation? Right. Like, uh, you know, if you were going to uh, be in a fight, we're hoping that maybe martial arts training would help. And really, when you take a look at sales, sales, in my mind, is a martial art. It's the skills to establish a relationship very quickly and help someone beyond their own understanding. But when you say help, that's when the good and evil comes in, because you can help yourself or sorry, you can help them or you can help yourself to them. And right. we do know that there are people in our industry that are very good at finding people to help and not so good at helping them. Right, sure. And I like to be on the other side. So now what does it take to be good in that moment? Well, I think it takes training. And when we talk about like what type of training it takes to be good at that, our team trains about, a, I would say, uh, consistently two and a half hours a week. Okay. And some of that is on research. Like uh, today we were reviewing the market stats. So we can tell you that, you know what, our market is coming to balance. And there's some, uh, there's some details that we have that we make sure that every teammate knows because it's also going to be who they're talking to. So as we go from a, a, a seller's market to a balanced market, those downsizers, if the seller's window is closing, we got to talk to them. And that- But don't want to derail too much but I wanted to kind of really pull that out there, right? So for some of the people that are going to watch this, brand new to the business, having a clue in the world of what to practice, how to practice, what to learn, how to learn, right? And so the first little tip that I pulled out of there was once a month, you could know your numbers, know what's going on in the general area, the general market that we work in, have some reference points, so that you could start to see and understand trends as they come. And until you can have your own opinion, find other people's opinions that you can relate to and uh, you know, make it your own, right? Re re and the great place to train here is at the sales meeting. So Remax River City has a great sales meeting. You guys cover the statistics and you get opinions from agents. So you right. get a big cross section of information. And if somebody was in there taking notes, what they're going to come out of, like the value of that training yeah. is what they really want to have is real estate conversations. So wouldn't it be nice to be equipped to have real estate conversations? Sure. Sure. Absolutely. So what to talk about is the market. You know, if you were a weather person, you'd probably be talking about the weather and understanding that is going to be a key to you participating. And it'll also show you some things like I used an example of there, which is uh, where you can take information because there's going to be winners in the market in every market. And our job is to find the people that can win and help them. Right. So getting that understanding. And then when it comes down to helping people, you have to understand that the majority of people will have some level of defense. So like right. imagine that you were walking through the mall and you had no defense for any salesperson that was going to ask you something. Yeah. And suddenly you lock eyes with the person that works that center kiosk at the mall. That guy's going to rob you, right? Like you're going to be out of money before you even found a store to walk into. So you have a defense when they say like, hey, will you accept this free thing? You're like, no, I'm allergic to free things or whatever you choose to say, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, uh, and then that's the same thing when we come in contact with people. So when you talk to buyers, what they're going to say most commonly is I'm just browsing. And when you talk to sellers, they're going to say uh, something very commonly like I don't need to sell. Yeah. Uh, they're also going to say things like I can wait. And understanding that those are going to be part of your conversations will help your training. So if somebody was just browsing, you could ask them, you know, what happens when you find something you like? That's going to be an entry level, just like we are training martial arts. That would be an entry level movement to get past and show that you qualify to help them. See, helping is just helping. Like that's a natural conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Or with the seller who says, I don't need to sell. Okay. Is there another reason you invited me to come by? Right? Like this is like, let's just put this illusion aside. You want to sell. So if you want to sell, I want to do this well. So tell me more about what you think a good job would be if you're not thinking timelines are tied to that. <clears throat> this is what comes through training. 
So then where can you train? Well, the idea is you take these little moments and you go and find other people that maybe have had more more experience in those moments or you see what level you're getting to. And you're like, man, people are just killing me with I'm just browsing right now. And why does everybody who come into my open house say they have an agent? Right? Yeah. These are defenses and you have to learn your way through. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, I know that we're talking about more script and I hate the word script, you know, or mm. talk track or whatever it is, but no matter where you are or what level you're at or what's going on in your life, you have a script. You say similar things in similar situations all of the time. And what you say matters. And can there be a better way? Like, oh, I don't want to be salesy. Okay, well, could you have more of a conversation and ask the right questions to help lead that person, you know, to an educated, you know, desired response, right? Um, and I want to unpack that a little bit. Sure, yeah. So you said being salesy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now I want people to associate that with not being good at sales. Okay. Yeah. Being salesy is you making a feeble attempt at actually, because the, that's not successful. It's not like the people, it's not like there's a good version of salesy, mm -hmm. you know, what it is, is it would be like a boxer seeing somebody throw a punch and be like, man, you're throwing muffins, right? Mm -hmm. It's just not very good. Whereas the craft is actually not to be a salesperson is to establish a relationship and also not to prematurely pitch. That's a big mistake that a lot of people make is like, how do I tell them to work with me or ask them for their business? And it's like, well, are you in the right position? Have you established a relationship? Do these people have any reason to trust you? So the other thing that you were mentioning is scripting. Now, um, if you were a carpenter, you'd probably really want to know a lot about how a hammer works, right? And there's a lot of things that you are going to do repetitively that you should probably practice. What we do is we talk. More so, I guess we listen if we're really good at this. Yeah. And so understanding that scripts may like uh, be not comfortable for you, but the idea is, is that you develop something that's not a script. But when you call someone, if you don't know what you're about to say, you're going to disqualify yourself from being helped. So here's an example. Hey, Shane, I saw you were looking at real estate. How can I help you? Doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? Because experts know how to help you. Mm -hmm. They don't ask. The, the doctor isn't like, what type of medication do you like? Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, that would disqualify them from being help. Right. So if you did know what you were talking about, you might be like, Hey, Shane, I saw you were looking at three, two, one main street. Did you know that property has been on, only on the market for three days? I didn't know that. See how I'm trying to make a deposit super early in that conversation. Right. Instead of making a withdrawal, how can I help you? Yeah. Versus, did you know this? This is valuable. Yeah. Actually, even something just as simple as that, that, that told me so much about where our conversation is going to go and who I'm working with. <clears throat> I, I, I really genuinely, I thought that was like, oh, I didn't know that. Why is that important to me? How come you know that? Oh, like there's so many things that kind of went through my head right away about that. Just that question. I think that it, it's simple, not, you know, a conversational piece, right? And it helps build that relationship. That's the important part. Of, that. That's the important part of training is, is that then when you've had a, a, a conversation 10,000 times, don't you think that you should be better at it than someone in their first time? Yep. Like what I was trying to do in that moment was to get through your defenses and show you that you might need me because I knew something that you didn't even know you didn't know. Right. So it's it, that, that it does have an advanced effect, but it's not particularly an advanced move. It's really something that we start a lot of people with is like, how do you open up that conversation? At least get past the first couple of minutes. You know, how do you earn that next 30 seconds? And then after that, there's some keys and we're just using examples. But like, if you don't know things like uh, the order of operation to get to know someone, that's something that training can help. Right. Like family, occupation, recreation, and dreams, right? 
if you can get through all of that on a phone call, think of how difficult it would be for that person to get that far with someone else and that level of comfort, right? Yeah. And so uh, also talking about property and saying location is a way better way to enter instead of price. It's just an easier access point for people to talk about. So take a look at all the little moments where you might win or lose. So that first point of contact, I might win or lose if I can't say things that help you understand. Or what I look at is like the biggest failure point of agents is when they start to work outside of their relationships. Like maybe new agents get to work with friends and family a lot. And relationships are the bridges that information travels on. So if they've got that big relationship, they don't need a lot of quality uh, information in the beginning. They get a lot of kind of leeway. Whereas by the time you're in year three and you've consumed your uh, sphere, (laughs) if you can't establish yourself as a credible expert in the first meeting with a stranger, it's over. And that's what we're training into is how do you get to that second point where you can understand whether or not you should be moving to a meeting? And then in those meetings, those listing presentations, if your listing presentation is a presentation, you may be already in trouble. Right. Meaning that it should be an exchange of information. And after that, it would be helping people understand uh, if they need to move with the market. Do they need to change something related to their show experience? Do they need to change something uh, related to their pricing? Because if you can't guide them on the things that they control, they're going to try to guide you on the thing that you control, which is their marketing. Right. And normally they're not equipped to guide you there. So I think that this is the reason that uh, you have to lose or learn. And if you learn before you get there, you're really going to control whether or not you lose. Where do you think, like you've worked with a lot of agents, you've mentored a ton of agents. And so uh, as we uh, kind of wrap, because I know that we're close for time here. Yeah. Um, what do you think, uh, about, uh, where you would like to see more agents, uh, get past? Like if those agents were like the little turtles, they get born on the beach and they're just trying to make it to the water before the seagulls go. <laughs> I love that. In, the, in that case, like, where would we say that we're going to try to help them the most? The, um, I think that it's in the asking questions, um, and guiding the conversation and i like like where he talked about that it's not a presentation it should be a conversation we want to peel back some of the layers not just be surface level but ask deeper questions so you know you know i hate the you know how many no's before a yes type of thing but just because they're you know saying i'm just browsing well that's not a no don't talk to me anymore that's a, I need to know more about that for me to help you, right? And so to, um, I think not to end conversations so quickly and to, to see where there's opportunity for you to provide value. And I think through, we'll call it role play, right? That type of training or just, I think even watching YouTube or some of these training, like uh, the Tom Ferries, the Richard Robbins of the world, things like that, just by osmosis, listening to them, you'll start to say things different and have a conversation. Do you think the next time I would ever uh, call back an online lead or somebody who's looking at a property and not talk to them about how many days on market, even if it's 80 days on market or whatever, like what a great conversational starter. Be like, hey, did you know that property was on for 80 days? I didn't know that. Why, why is that important to me? Like that just sounds a great one. Like such a great piece. Oh, we're just browsing. Hey, the one that you're browsing on here is in Mill Woods. Are you specifically looking for property in Mill Woods? Is that what's catching your eye the most? Like not shutting the door right on that. And, and uh, the only other one that I think is the, is the biggest miss I see is that uh, agents forget to ask for the order at the end of a conversation, a relationship, they'll show dozens of property, but never once ask if the client wants to try an offer out on a property, right? Mm-hmm. And we're uh, flat out. Why don't you buy this one? Yeah. yeah. Right. 
like you can like some people will be more direct, but I think that you're very right in that. I think that there should be more agents taking a look at what training should be like for them. And don't go on the internet and just look for real estate training. Think about the stuff that's like applicable to you right now. And when we're talking about the those conversations, because that's going to be the key to getting you opportunity. Yeah. That's why we're suggesting that you train there, because if just browsing is a locked door to you, that's what your competition is getting past. That's allowing them to work with the clients you want to work with. Right. So you want to train into that until the, you, until you're comfortable, because a lot of people think that confidence is just happens. Confidence is a foundation in understanding, and you need to be in that position enough to understand it. So train. Train with your colleagues, train with your mentors here, train, uh, find places that will facilitate your growth because the people that you want to beat in this industry, like if you're a competitor, like many of us are, that group is training and it's incredible here. You could be learning how to skate and Connor McDavid is in this industry as an example, right? Yeah. But also the people that were the greats of the past didn't have to retire. Like Wayne Gretzky's still cruising around, you know, like it's, it's a very interesting place and you can choose to watch and learn those same uh, from those same yeah. groups. Yeah. I love that. Learn. Yeah. Learn from others. Like we talk about mentorship, but yeah, just pick their brand and ask them. And um, I don't want to go too deep into it, but if I've never done any sort of training, let's talk about like role play style. How would I start? I would ask my community. So like there's a Remax River City uh, internal Facebook group. And I would ask who else would like to role play. When I had first started um, in the basement of our old location at Ritchie Mill, I hosted uh, six of us. And we would meet there every Tuesday. And we would talk about scripts and role play about where we're trying to uh, make gains, all of those things, because I didn't have a team to train with like I do now. But real estate teams have also changed. A lot of those people that are coming into the industry should take a look at that. Because if you're looking to gain experience, it can be like five years for every year you're part of a team because of the access. Right. Most people don't give you this much access to what success looks like. Than when you're uh, than when you're in the that environment. So that's the biggest thing is is that you either need to make a group of peers or find a group of peers so that you can start because it is tough to train these things alone. You can mm -hmm. find scripts online, and also I have to say that one of the best places I've seen new agents make gains is on Clubhouse. Okay, there is an ongoing conversation on the social media app Clubhouse. It's the real estate rooms are easy to find. There's script and role play rooms all the time. There's a whole bunch like uh, that's a that's a honeypot right now. <clears throat> and they're strangers, so it doesn't matter. Screw up, make mistakes. Like man, there's a guy from Nova Scotia that door knocks live on Clubhouse. <laughs> like he literally like if you ever wanted to hear door knocking i think you can still find this dude and he yeah. like literally you just listen to him going upon going along door knocking yeah yeah I love that. uh so great i found it hugely valuable i'm definitely going to steal some of our conversation and uh some of your anecdotes uh when i'm meeting with other agents i think there's a lot of value in that um i consider myself a lifelong learner and um it's uh, it's amazing how much um even just a little bit, 15 minutes a week can make a massive difference over time done consistently. And um, so I appreciate your time. It's very valuable and I do very much appreciate that. And uh, I'm sure there's some really good insights that Agent Scott and uh, I know that uh, Taylor is a huge resource and he's always willing to give advice and, uh, and also looking to grow with the right people. And so if, uh, if that's a match and you want to have a conversation with Taylor about uh, his team and opportunities there, I'm sure you'd be open to that as well. Yeah. Yeah, man. We're looking for business athletes with a team of only uh, four licenses. We took number one at the brokerage last month against some significantly larger teams. So if you see yourself as a business athlete, this might be the place for you. Love that business athlete. That's great. Uh, okay. Thanks again, Taylor. Appreciate you very much. Have a great day, man. You too. Cheers.